Hi, I'm Anne. I'm working at the University of Oslo in Norway, and I will guide you through this Galaxy tutorial on the functionally assembled terrestrial ecosystem simulator, FATES. Uh, this is part of the Galaxy Climate Workbench, and uh, I will be very happy to answer any question on this tutorial or uh, any question related to the usage of uh, climate data in Galaxy. So what we will learn in this tutorial is uh, first how to run this uh, phase model using the Galaxy tool and uh, how to input uh, to upload input data for, for running uh, the model. Uh, how to prepare the input data is out of scope of this uh, tutorial, but we will also learn how to customize your run or to analyze your model outputs and finally to create a, a workflow for making your research fully reproducible. Um, a strong warning before you start uh, um, this, uh, uh, this uh, tutorial. Uh, it can take quite a lot of time to run the model. We are running five years to have uh, some uh, scientifically significant results. Um, and it takes uh, about uh, uh, three to four hours on, uh, on the galaxy uh, climate, uh, the European instance. So to make sure you can also analyze the results and uh, finish the tutorial in time, on time, uh, I have also prepared some uh, pre-made uh, uh, simulation that you can uh, upload in uh, your history. I will uh, show it in a separate video. Thank you. Let's start this tutorial. First, make sure you are logged in on the Galaxy Climate Gal instance. So make sure you have this Galaxy Climate. Um, so this is the European Galaxy instance, usegalaxy.eu, and in front you add climate dot. So the full address is https colon slash slash climate dot usegalaxy.eu. Make sure you are logged in here. Here I'm logging as my username. And the tutorial we will uh, do together is this one in the climate category here. And this functionally assembled terrestrial ecosystem simulator phase. So we are taking the hands on here. And we can start first to create a new history and then to create, uh, uh, to upload the data. So as we will be using this Galaxy Climate Instance in Europe, we have already the data available on this Galaxy Instance. So we will not upload the data from Zenodo, but we will directly import the data from a data library. And I will show you how to do that. So, but first, let's create a new history. So I click here on this plus to create a new history. And I will rename the history. I will call it Fates for this tutorial. And then to upload the data, I will go to the shared data and data libraries. And you should see this Earth System Community Modeling. Then the CTSM, which is for Community Terrestrial System Model. And then this is where you can find the, the input data and the restart file. So uh, I will explain uh, just after what, uh, what it is about. But first, let's select the input data. So this is really the forcing for the climate model, for the phase model, and a restart file. So here, this is uh, um, the restart, sorry. And the input data is here. Let's import it. So I will export it as a data set to my history. Import. And that's it. Let's go to analyze. And because they're already on the system, this is already green, so everything is all right. So let's first discuss these two input files, because this is quite important. Um, I will show you again the tutorial. Oh, we have to go back to here. So the input data. Um, so 
for preparing this uh, input data, this is completely out of scope of, of this tutorial and uh, we'll probably in the future write a separate tutorial for explaining how to prepare the input data. What we provide uh, is a tarball to the model where at least we have uh, these four folders in, uh, in your uh, tarball, which is the ATM, which is for the atmospheric component. So the forcing for the fate model for the atmosphere. The CPL, which is for the coupling, which uh, says uh, how uh, the atmosphere and the land can interact with each other. And the LND, which is for the land. So this is where the fate uh, component is, uh, is uh, available. And uh, the share, which is also um, a share uh, folder where we have, for instance, the topography and other information relative to um, non-specific uh, data. So the model we will be running is what we call a single point. So we have only one point, which is uh, um, uh, a location, so with a latitude and longitude, and uh, this is a uh, um, a point in Norway, so it will represent, uh, represent some Norwegian alpine tundra ecosystem. So this is the latitude and longitude and the elevation. So why do we have this uh, different uh, location? This is mostly because we can uh, then compare with some uh, observations, because this is a, a location where we make uh, measure measurements on a, a regular basis. So they have been prepared for you and they are ready to use. So this is a site included in the modeling platform, which is dev developed under the Emerald project, which is a, a project at the University of Oslo in Norway. So we have uploaded this uh, data set. So this uh, input data, which is an input uh, underscore version. So for each version of the model, you have to be careful to have a different version of the input data. And uh, we have uh, another file, which is uh, a restart file. This is mostly because um, the model, uh, any climate model, if you start from scratch, so without any uh, restart file, the model will be very unstable. So what we usually do to have a quite a stable uh, starting point, we first run the model for quite a very long time. So here we run it for 2,300 2, years. Uh, so it can stabilize, uh, it, it can be uh, stabilized and uh, we can make some further uh, simulation. So this is uh, usually what, uh, what you need to do with climate model. Uh, this is the difference between a cold start and a, a restart uh, model. So we will uh, now uh, set up the CLM fate simulation. So we will be using this uh, CTSM FATE Emerald Galaxy tool, which is specific to uh, the Norwegian uh, ecosystem. And uh, it is based on a general model, uh, CLM FATE, uh, and it has been adapted for this uh, uh, Norwegian location. You can find more information if you click, for instance, here. Uh, an easy way to find the tool is to click here. And then it will appear in the, in, the, in the middle part. So what do we need to start the model? Uh, we first need to make sure we have the right input data. So this input, uh, input files, the tarball. And uh, second, uh, we need to make sure we specify um, in the customized part. We change, we don't want a startup. A startup is what I, I called before a, a cold start. We want to start from this restart file uh, where we have run uh, this 2,300 years to make sure the model and uh, the results are scientifically meaningful. So I will change it from startup to hybrid. And uh, I need to put a reference uh, model. So here, this is the name of, uh, of this um, experiment. So here, for instance, we put the name of the case for each experiment. So when I ran this one, I gave a, a, a name which was called ALP1 underscore ref, ref case. Um, I also need to specify uh, when I, where I want to start for this reference. So I will uh, start from this 2000 
300 years and this uh, 0101, which is the 1st of January. Um, and uh, here, this is a start date, which we uh, can uh, use for uh, storing the model output. And I will, uh, I want to start from a, a very start date 001 to make sure it will uh, go uh, forward. So I will start from 001 and the 1st January of this year. So, I mean, this is uh, mostly for reference for yourself. It doesn't have any uh, significance in terms of uh, uh, science, scientific results. Um, what else do we need to do? So here we are. Uh, we can select different uh, model resolutions or so different location in Norway, but we will take this Alp one uh, for this case. And here, this is uh, the name of your experiment. So, uh, which is a string. You can choose uh, um, usually whatever you want, but it has to be meaningful. So for this one, I will call it Alp one. Uh, XP, which is experiment. So this is very uh, classical in uh, climate modeling to call uh, experiment with us, like here, this is a model resolution and uh, experiment for experiment. Uh, what else do we need to change? So make sure here for the restart, we don't want to take the input file, but we want to take this restart. Uh, well, here we want to take the input data we will run it for five years. So here we have five, but we need to change from n days to n years. So you can type n years and then select. Um, what else do we want to change? Um, I think this is, uh, this is it for this one. Uh, here, this is some uh, advanced cu customization. We will see uh, later on when we do some uh, different simulation. So here you are ready to start. You can click and execute. So you will have uh, many different output file, which uh, I will explain once this is done. It uh, it usually take it takes a bit of time, so you can uh, make a break, and uh, we'll come back uh, later when it is done. When it's first running, it will be orange, and then. Um, when it's uh, finished. So as you can see now, it is running. It's uh, all uh, orange. Um, it will uh, still take uh, some time before it, uh, it finishes. Uh, let's have a look at what we will get uh, um, as output. So we have many uh, what we call log files here with uh, like the atm.log, which is for the atmosphere component. And this is because this is uh, some kind of couple model between the atmosphere and the land. So we'll have one for the atmosphere, one for the land, this lnd.log. And a, a log file, this is mostly uh, given, give, uh, it will give you some information about uh, the run and uh, what uh, has been perform performed for this component. So this is interesting to see if everything was all right. Then you have uh, some log file for this uh, CPL is a coupling because it, uh, the land and the atmosphere, they need to communicate some information. Uh, between the surface and uh, the atmosphere. And then you have uh, a log file, it's a CSM log file, which is also the, a log file for the whole uh, CLM FATE component. Uh, what else do we have? We have this rough uh, log file, which is for the runoff, um, which we need to have always uh, when running a land and atmosphere component. Uh, usually, I, I don't really uh, look into detail for this component. This is not very important for us. Um, then we'll have uh, uh, some case info, uh, information about the case. Uh, it's mostly uh, like a text file, uh, getting some uh, very basic information about your experiment and uh, recalling you what, uh, what setting you have done. Um, and you will create this restart uh, info file, which is also a text file, which we will uh, use, for instance, if you want to continue the run. So it's always uh, have a, like a restart info file, and you should have somewhere the restart file, which is a tarball. So these two files here, they go together. 
uh, and we only use them if we want to continue the run uh, after, for instance, here we are running five years, if we want to run a, a longer simulation after the five years. Uh, we'll see later how to do that. Um, I haven't explained this work here. This is uh, where the model is running. Um, and uh, I look at this uh, tarball and I download it uh, on my uh, laptop. Uh, if I want to check uh, something, especially when uh, the run was not very successful or when, when the results are not uh, as expected. Otherwise, the most important output for us is uh, what uh, we call the history file, um, and uh, it will be in this one. So it's a, it's a collection because we can have more than one uh, output file, depending on uh, how long you are running the model. So we'll wait for uh, the simulation to finish and we'll look at uh, this file for checking the model output. So let's go back to our simulation. Uh, it is completed now, as we can see, um, all the tasks are green and uh, uh, the run has uh, successfully completed. We can look at some of the, file, uh, the files, especially for instance, if you want to look at the logs file, uh, like here for um, the atmospheric component. So it's quite large, so it will only show some uh, part of it, but uh, it's usually, I mean, this is successful. Um, and uh, we also have uh, some other uh, information uh, like the restart file, restart info, which uh, tells you how many uh, years have run. So for instance, we know here we have uh, started from year one and we have run five years. So the next uh, restart file uh, will be uh, at six year and uh, January 1st. Um, now what we want to do is to analyze the model output, uh, NetCDF data format, and all the data will be in this uh, history file collection. If we click on it, here we have only one file um, because we have run a short simulation, so sometimes we can have more. And if we click on it, uh, we can see the format NC. This is a binary format. And the first thing we will do is to change the format to NetCDF because the tool for now um, didn't manage to uh, successfully uh, detect uh, the NetCDF format. So we click here on the edit attributes. And uh, in a uh, uh, data type and here I will uh, switch to NetCDF and I will select and uh, I will click on change data type. So it will uh, spin for a few seconds normally, not very long. Um, and the next step uh, will be to change the name of this file. So this file is also uh, in this collection um, here. It should be done by now. Yes, no, not yet. We will change uh, its name um, because uh, the name um, contain some dots and some uh, spe special characters that may not be um, uh, correctly uh, used uh, for some tools uh, in a galaxy. So the, the best is always to change to some short name and meaningful name. So we can use, for instance, this NetCDF uh, file in, uh, in Panoply, which is a, an interactive tool for vis to visualize NetCDF data. So here I will again edit the attributes and uh, I will call this file alp1 underscore dot nc. Yes, and I will save. So now we have both the format is netcdf and uh, the name is alp1 underscore exp. .nc. Then uh, let's go back to the tutorial. In the climate. 
And this is this one, the functionally assembled terrestrial ecosystem simulator. And so far, what we have done is uh, uh, we have uploaded the data and setting up the CLM fate simulation. This is a step here for creating a new case. And uh, what uh, we have done also is to uh, change the type and uh, rename the data set. And now what we will uh, uh, use is this NetCDF uh, metadata uh, info to get some information on the names of the variables and uh, the dimensions of uh, all the different variables. So then we can uh, later uh, extract some uh, uh, meaningful uh, information, for instance, if we want to visualize some of the variables. So we will uh, use this uh, uh, NetCDF XRE metadata info um, to generate uh, two input files uh, containing information on the metadata. And uh, we will try to answer to this question, which is uh, what are the short names of the relevant variables um, and uh, which one will you pick uh, uh, if you want to, uh, to result in a millimeter per second. So this is uh, to get uh, some uh, uh, information uh, about uh, the canopy transpiration. So let's click on this tool here. So we'll have presented here. We check uh, that you are taking the right input file, which is alp1 underscore xp.nc. And we can execute. So it will generate two files, uh, one uh, containing some uh, short information about the different uh, dimensions of the variable, which we use for different tools, uh, XRE tools. And the other one uh, will be uh, all the metadata contained in these NetCDF files. And then we'll search for the canopy transpiration variable. So it's still running. Let's wait. Yeah, so it's done. Let's have a look at the two different files. So this one uh, contains, um, oops, there is an error all the different uh, information about uh, the variables, but also the dimensions. So this is always, a, a, this is a NetCDF uh, data. So we have this dimension at the top um, and we have the um, length of uh, each dimension uh, integer here. And uh, we have all the different variables and for each of them, we know the different dimensions. And we also know some, uh, we get some more information about um, the metadata, like the long name here and the units. So this is quite standard. Uh, we are following the climate uh, convention, climate forecast convention, CF convention uh, for getting the net CDF output. And uh, you can see we have lots of variables. Um, and at the very bottom, you will get all the global attributes, which usually you know um, where and who has created this file. Um, we know which convention uh, is uh, used, which is a CF 1.0 and uh, some other global information about this uh, data set. So now let's uh, look at the second metadata information. So this one is uh, usually the one we use for some other tools. And uh, what we get is a list of variable names and uh, uh, dimension for each of the variables. Um, so um, this is the info file you can use to get uh, um, some uh, metadata information about all the different variables and in particular the long names, which is usually where we find uh, variable names uh, we, we can relate to uh, uh, scientific uh, uh, variables. Um, so if, let's go back to the question. Uh, the question was uh, um, identify which variables would provide you some insights about the canopy transpiration. So usually what I do 
is I go here and I do um, control F to search for um, canopy transpiration. And here I found already one variable. So uh, here we have one variable FCTR, which is a function of time and LND grid. LND grid is a number of points uh, in the grid. And here, this is a single location simulation. So this variable uh, will be uh, equal to one, which we can check at the very top. LND grid here, you can see is one. So if we go back to this variable, and uh, this is probably the first one again, this FCTR, this is the one we have seen. Um, and uh, the units are what bar uh, square meters. So uh, this is one of the variable and the time is mean. So this mean uh, that the variable is average over uh, each uh, period of time. So here, um, so the time step of the model uh, is different from the uh, out model output frequency. Uh, we average uh, outputs over a month. So each uh, value is uh, an average over the entire month. Let's look at the next one. So we have uh, another one, which is QVE uh, GT. Uh, and this time, this is exactly the same variable, but the units are different. This is millimeter per second for the canopy transpiration. So um, we have, uh, we can say if we want to answer to the question, which variables would provide you some insight about the canopy transpiration, we can say, uh, with the FATES model, we have two variables. One is called FCTR, um, and uh, the unit is a uh, watt per uh, square meter. And the other variable is QVEGT, which is in millimeter per uh, second. Um, so if uh, you want uh, to have uh, a variable in millimeter per second, you would need to take this uh, variable QVEGT. Um, the second question was, what are the dimensions of this variable? And this is what I briefly mentioned before. This is uh, uh, over time and uh, uh, for one single location. So if we look at how many times do we have? So if you remember, we ran um, five years. So the time will be 60. Uh, so we have answer to the first uh, question. Um, Let's go back now to uh, the tutorial. So we have done this uh, metadata info. And what we will do next is uh, to uh, quickly visualize the data with uh, Panoply. So how do we uh, start Panoply? Panoply is an interactive tool. Um, and uh, the easiest is uh, to start it from, uh, from here, I will show, and then to use this live galaxy. So if you look at it here, we say that uh, we suggest to use this live.usegalaxy.eu. And this is mostly to avoid the problems uh, when you are opening the application. So let's do that. I will uh, here go to the interactive tool and uh, you will find this panoply here. And make sure you are taking the right input, which is here, this alp1 underscore exp dot in C, which is a NetCDF history file, exactly the same file we got some uh, metadata info so far. And now we will really visualize uh, the data. So over the five years of simulation, I execute. And uh, here to have uh, no problem uh, when I start this uh, Panoply uh, interactive tool in the um, in active interactive tool panel, I will switch to the live dot use galaxy dot eu. So this is the same portal, but this is a different view. We mostly see 
um, the um, interactive tools. And what I will do here, um, I will first log in. So I'm logging. I will make sure I'm in the right history. So I need to go in the history where my panoply tool has been started. So I can switch to this one. And then analyze data. And I will go to user, active interactive tools. And I will click here to get started. And panoply uh, just starts. So here, this is a panel you will get initially. And you have to select this uh, input data, help one. And you can click on it. And it will appear here and then open. Um, as you can see here, you have all the different variables uh, similar to what we have seen previously with the XRA metadata info tool. Um, with here the dimension, so it says if this is 1D variable, 2D variable, or 3D variable, etc. For instance, we have mostly 1D and 2D variables because this is a single location simulation. And here, this is all the metadata um, in a similar way uh, than the metadata information of the Galaxy tool. So um, if we look at uh, uh, what is asked in the uh, tutorial, we want to um, search for some variables. Uh, so for instance, we would like to find uh, what is a long name of mortality. So in this tool, uh, what is quite nice is everything is uh, in alphabetical order. So if I go to uh, L, M, it will show up very quickly, mort mortality. So this mortality here, oops, if I double click, it will uh, show you how to visualize. But let's first look at um, some metadata. So when you click on the variable here on the left uh, button of your mouse, it uh, will appear here and you will see the variable name and uh, the different dimensions. So we have uh, 60 uh, values for the time. Um, we have a different level, uh, this uh, left PFT 12. So this is a different PFT values. We will see this uh, plant functional types. And uh, uh, we still have one uh, single point. So we have LND grid equals to one. The long name is rate of total mortality by uh, PFT, um, plant functional type. So um, to answer to the question, we have just answered to the first question. If we go, uh, which is the rate of total mortality by PFT, the long name of the mortality variable. Uh, what is its uh, physical unit? So we can see the units are just below here. And uh, the units are uh, this NDIV per HA and per year. So the next uh, uh, question is to plot the total carbon in the live plant leaves. So this uh, variable is called, uh, the short name is uh, uh, leaf FC, a leaf, uh, so we have to search for L, leaf SC, which is the total carbon in the live plant leaves. Let's uh, click here. And if you double uh, click, it will show you how to make a, a plot. And uh, so we can, uh, we want to plot the variable as a function uh, of the time, so along the axis. And this is a plot we get here. So every time we get a, um, a plot and we want to save the plot in Panoply. So you have here to go in file and uh, save the image as, so you can eventually change the name if you want to. 
and make sure you put this uh, uh, image in the output folder. So then when we will uh, close the panoply, quit panoply, it will uh, be saved back into our uh, galaxy history. Um, so um, do you observe any pattern um, in this uh, uh, plot? And uh, does it uh, make sense from a scientific point of view? So what I can briefly say here is uh, if we look at the time here and the different uh, months and years, we can clearly see some uh, seasonal cycle, which is uh, quite uh, normal because uh, the carbon uh, in life plants uh, leaves will, uh, will change uh, as a function of the time, depending if this is winter or summer. Okay, so we have saved our uh, plot in, uh, in the output folder. Uh, now we can also plot the rate of uh, total mortality per TFT, which is a second variable, this uh, mortality. So here what you can do once your plot is uh, finished and uh, you have saved the image, you can go in file and you can close. So don't quit panoply because if you quit, uh, you will be, uh, um, you will uh, leave completely panoply and you will not be able to, um, to plot in any other variables. So let's go to the mortality, which is here. And again, I left click twice to get this panel for plotting. You can also get it um, in, in the view here. Um, and uh, here we will select, so this is a 2D variable, as you can see, so um, Panoply will uh, offer you the possibility to create a 2D plot. And then you have to choose if you want to have uh, this uh, fate, uh, this PFT on the X axis or, um, and the, the, or the time. And usually what we do is we like to have the time on the X axis, which is the evolution of the PFT. And on, uh, on the vertical, on the y-axis, we will uh, see all the different uh, PFT. So I will create this plot. Um, so by default, it takes a quite um, not very uh, user-friendly color uh, scale. So we'll uh, first change uh, the color to make uh, sure we can see a bit better the pattern. Um, and so that we can answer to the question, uh, which is again, can you observe any pattern and uh, if this uh, makes sense for you. So how to customize your plot in uh, Panoply. Uh, first thing we can do is to change this color map. So you can choose uh, any color map you, you would find uh, appropriate for, for your visualization. So, um, I'm sorry, it didn't select. Uh, there are so many different ones. Sometimes it's uh, difficult to choose. So when you find, uh, yes, this one are usually quite uh, nice for making some plots. I don't know if there is much different. Let's take that one. Uh, for instance, um, and then the second thing we will uh, do is to, to change um, the vertical, so the grid here. So there are many things you can customize, some the, like the minimum and the maximum value, which are this min and max, but that's okay, we will not change them. Um, and uh, the grid, you can uh, change uh, the grid for, for your plot, so you can see a bit more uh, this plot correctly. Um, so let's uh, go to... Um, this solid, um, don't remember exactly. Like, for instance, no, that's not this one. 
Uh, oh, this is not, not the X, we want the Y, sorry. Yes, so here this is, uh, it will allow us to highlight a bit more this pattern, which is at this level. Um, one thing we can change now is to make sure um, it fits and fill all the plot. So instead of uh, starting at, uh, um, uh, zero five here, we can put uh, one and here, for instance, uh, yes, um, maybe, well, maybe this is okay here, maybe five. It's maybe a bit too big. Um, so we can maybe, it was 10. Yeah, we can still keep one. Uh, and here I can see it doesn't start at zero because uh, we'll only get some uh, output at the end of the first month. So instead of uh, starting at zero, um, I will put uh, one month, which would be uh, like 31 days uh, to fill it. Um, and then what we can see here is uh, um, that uh, we clearly have a seasonal cycle again, if we look at the time here, and this is always again, this uh, winter and summer um, values. And this is essentially uh, for this PFT, which is this uh, PFT2. Uh, again, I will uh, save this plot. So I can save the image as, and again, I make sure I'm in the output folder. So if you want, for instance, again, and you can play a bit with this and you can change, uh, for instance, uh, different uh, um, color scale, uh, different values uh, here. So you can uh, see a bit more uh, and adjust your plot for, uh, for your publication. So usually I try a few things uh, uh, to see, uh, to make sure I can highlight very well the different uh, seasonality here. So for instance, it looks like this color scale really highlight more what I uh, would like to highlight, which is this seasonality. So um, I will save again this image in this folder. Uh, yeah, I need to give a new name. So I will probably uh, call for color. Um, so I have some plots uh, which I can save. And um, now uh, you can make uh, several plots and try different variables. I will close this plot here. Feel free to experiment with other variables that can be of interest for you and uh, save all the outputs in the output folder. And once you are done, uh, you can quit Panoply. And then we can close this uh, and this one and go back here. And you will see this panoply output here will uh, terminate in a few uh, seconds and uh, we'll have a plot which we can download on, the, on our laptop. Yeah, so we have these plots here, which I can look. And here, this is usually, it tells you the version of the tool, uh, of the Panoply tool. So we have done um, this uh, three plots, and then you can choose uh, the one that would be more appropriate, for instance, for your publication. So you can download uh, your file, for instance, here on your laptop for later usage, but you have it in your history. So then I go back to phase here. Uh, so we have done already uh, the first two steps and uh, we'll uh, now use uh, um, not an interactive tool, but um, another tool for making some uh, visualization. So we have used uh, Panoply for uh, plotting 
and analyzing uh, our results. Wh why do we want to use a, a Galaxy tool for, for analyzing and plotting the results instead? Wh why not uh, simply always uh, use Panoply? The thing is we want to make a workflow at the end. We want to automate our research. So uh, running uh, a Panoply, an interactive tool, is uh, not the best way to automate uh, your research. It's really good for exploring your data, for uh, making new uh, research and new discovery. But then the next step is usually to automate your process. So we'll go back to uh, this training here. And uh, where we have been so far, we have run the model, we have used Panoply to analyze. We have inspected the metadata. And now what we will do is this part. So to use a Galaxy tool for analyzing the CLM fate simulation. So to create some visualization, but uh, directly from a Galaxy tool, so we can uh, incorporate this step in, uh, in our workflow. So if you remember before, we have used already some XRA tools. So this one now, we will uh, make some selection. So we will select the values from this leaf FC variable. Uh, so we will have the value as text tabular uh, data. So we can then use, for instance, a, a ggplot for making a plot in a Galaxy. So let's take this one. And as you can see, we'll have to make sure we take the right input file, always this history file. Um, and uh, we'll have uh, this uh, metadata info in, uh, for this variable as an input, which is the result of uh, some of the previous steps we have done already. And then we will run it. At the end, we'll always uh, rename uh, this so I can already copy it. We will rename the data set for future usage. It's always a good practice and we will extract the leaf FC uh, variable. So I can click here to get the tool. And I have run the alp underscore x dot nc as an input, which is an CDF file. And immediately it already uh, it has chosen this tabular variable, which is a list of variables and the dimensions, and uh, which is the results of the previous uh, metadata XRE uh, tool we have used. Uh, for the variable name, we'll uh, select leaf FC, which is here, you can select. Um, if we want to select manual under the coordinates, it's not necessary. We want everything and we have only one point. So it's not really necessary to select and reduce the amount of data. Uh, and then we can execute. So it will take some time. Okay, so it starts running. So it's quite a, a small tool, so it shouldn't take too long because we don't have so much data. We have only five years of simulation. And uh, if you have a look at the introduction of climate data, uh, you may remember that uh, to be scientifically uh, meaningful in climate, we usually take period of time uh, about at least uh, 20 to 30 years. So this is here a very short simulation we do, which is still inter interesting because we can see some seasonality, but it would not be something we can use uh, for um, uh, assessing the climate or the change in climate for, for this location. So if we look uh, here and we click on this view data, we can see now we have extracted this leaf FC variable, uh, which we have already done before uh, with a panoply. 
And here we have one single location, so it's, this variable is not very meaningful. And here, this is all the different times. So this is for the first year uh, at the beginning. So the time will be 02, because we have started the simulation on the 1st January. Uh, and then the output, the model will output some results every month, and it uh, makes an average over the previous months. Uh, so here we have up to uh, January um, year six, which is the average uh, of the previous months. And here they are the values. And what we want now is to prepare this tabular uh, file. Uh, for a scatter plot using ggplot. So uh, the first step would be um, to prepare this first column, the time, in a, in a way that can be understood by ggplot. And one of the problem we have here, this is uh, after uh, the year, the month and the day, we have a space for the time, but the time is completely irrelevant for this climate model because um, we have only zero everywhere, which corresponds at uh, midnight. So what uh, we will do is uh, we will use a tool um, to remove this pattern, so to split, and only keep this one. So if we go back to the tutorial, uh, we'll see we have done um, this first part, which was to select uh, this and get the uh, tabular values of the left FC. And now what we will do is we will clean the data, clean the date uh, using this replace part of the text. Uh, we'll take the result of the previous step, which we will rename uh, first uh, the variables, uh, the, the, mod the output file to this. I forgot to do it, so I do it again. And I go here and I will rename the file, always very good practice, I forgot. And I will control V and I save. So it will change the name, I'm, I'm good. And then I can go back to my tutorial here and uh, to this tool here where I will use uh, this uh, replace part of text. So I will select the input, this NetCDF uh, file, which has been converted to tabular by extracting only one variable. And uh, uh, I will find this pattern, which is the time. Um, and uh, I will, uh, what I, I will do is, uh, I will replace all the occurrence of this pattern, so of zero, colon zero, colon zero. Um, and uh, I will remove entirely these values so that we have a clean tabular output. Uh, and we will find and replace text in uh, uh, the entire line. So let's do that. So what we do here, make sure I have the right tabula and the file to process in this NetCDF XRE selection. What pattern do we want to find this 00 colon 00 colon 00, which correspond to hour, minute, and second. Uh, we want to replace with some empty because we want to remove this. Uh, it's not uh, very meaningful for us. So find pattern is a regular expression. No, this is not a regular expression. This is only the pattern uh, we want to remove. Replace all occurrence of the pattern. Yes, we want to replace all the occurrence. Um, is it case sensitive? It doesn't really matter because this is numbers. Um, and uh, we want to find the uh, whole words. We can say, yes, this is what we want to find. We want to make sure we find all the zero colon zero zero colon zero zero. And we want to repl replace it in the entire line, which is the default. Um, as you can see, we can always get some email notification at the end of the tool, which is not here very necessary, but we can be useful when running the CLM fake model. So I can execute. Mm. 
waiting for execution. Okay, so it starts running, it shouldn't be long. The only the very long step is the first one when we run the model. So here, if we look at the results and we can click. So we have suppressed this, uh, the time in the, in the dates here. So we only have the year, the months and the day and then the value of the leaf FC. So now this is quite clean and we can uh, uh, use, for instance, uh, ggplot, the scatter plot um, with ggplot to plot uh, uh, the left leaf FC value as a function of time. So here you can uh, search for ggplot. It's usually coming very quickly, so there is no need. Yes, and you can see, for instance, this one would do very well. Um, yeah, so we haven't renamed, and this is probably best before we do that to rename again. So, I'll, sorry, I go back, I forgot to rename, and I will rename it to a uh, meaningful name, which is a leaf FC, and this is a clean uh, dot tabular. So, this is really the clean values of my leaf FC extracted from the netcdf file. And sorry, again, now I can finally uh, plot. So it's, it's not mandatory to change the name, but it's usually a good practice for, for yourself. So you remember exactly what you have done. Uh, what do we want to do? So we want to plot um, in the value in this leaf FC clean tabula with the first column is uh, the number, the row number. Then the second one is the time. And uh, uh, we have also this uh, LN grid, which is not what we want. Uh, so we have zero, uh, we have the time, this one, and we have this two, uh, two, this one, the time, sorry, no, this is the row number is one, the time is two, this LN grid is three, as we can see here, and the fourth is leaf FC. So what we want to plot is, for instance, uh, first colon as a function of the force to leaf FC. We can give a um, meaningful title, which is here the total carbon in live plant leaves. Uh, label for the x-axis is time. And we can even put uh, um, some more information, but time would be sufficient. We mostly want to see the evolution. And uh, for the Y label, we can say this is leaf FC. And we can put the unit, for instance, which is a kilo C H A minus one. Mm. Oh, and I made a typo, which is kilogram C. So we have uh, this, uh, some uh, more advanced option, which we can customize the plots. For instance, um, we can say here we want points and line. Um, and uh, in the output option, so we can close the advanced option. And in the output option, we can change the width uh, and for instance of your plot and the height. Uh, because this is a square by default, but uh, here we have five years of data. What, so what we would like to have is uh, um, a plot which is larger than uh, uh, the, its height, so we can really see the different uh, years. So I will put, for instance, uh, 19.0 here, and uh, here this is five. And why 19? Because I have uh, five years, so it's, uh, I mean, I could put 20 if I want. Uh, it's uh, approximately to have some larger, uh, some widths for each year. And the rest I don't really need to change. You can change the format, but you can keep it in PNG if you want.
So again, uh, we here we have only uh, plot, plotted the F, leaf FC. You feel free to try to plot any other variables uh, to try it out. Maybe there are some other tools in Galaxy for plotting. So if you make nice plots and you want to report it, uh, please share um, what you have done. And again, this uh, step shouldn't be too long. This is uh, mostly taking your uh, tabular and making a ggplot. Yes, this is done. And here you have your plot. So it's quite large because it's good resolution. So what you can do to visualize it better, you can download it. And you can, uh, for instance, plot it. And um, oops. So for instance, if we look at what it looks like, and this is what you should see. So this is really the same plot as before, but uh, with uh, ggplot. Uh, so this is full, uh, can be fully automated in, into your workflow. So now it starts to be quite exciting because we have uh, run a simulation with FATE and we can automate uh, some plots and create some uh, plots automatically. So we will now create a, a workflow from the history we have, so we can rerun uh, our simulation and uh, plots, so to make it fully uh, reproducible, and it will allow us to be able to run new kind of simulation. So for instance, changing the inputs uh, data, new data or some um, parameters of the simulation, etc. So it's, uh, it's quite interesting. Let's do this uh, conversion. So what we will do is we will extract the workflow from the history. So we'll go in the history menu and uh, we'll extract the workflow with the workflow extract workflow option. And uh, we will have to remove any unwanted steps. So uh, for instance, if you remember, we have used Panoply, an interactive tool. And in a, in a workflow, we, we don't really want to keep this uh, interactive tool because we want to have a fully automated task, tasks. So we will um, remove uh, this uh, step. We will uh, rename the workflow to something uh, more meaningful. So for instance, we'll take this um, CLM fate uh, uh, help one five years of simulation. So we can copy here the string. Um, and uh, I will uh, create a new workflow that we can edit uh, before uh, we run it. So let's do that. We, we go to the um, menu option into history. Oops, where's my mouse? I can see it. Yeah. In this menu here, this uh, wheel, you click and you see all the different uh, um, options you can uh, do with your history. And uh, the first thing we will do is to extract the workflow. Here we can give a new name of the workflow. Uh, and before we create this workflow, we will check the different steps and uh, we will remove, for instance, so here we see the inputs, the fades, and all the different outputs generated. So XRE metadata, mm, this one I don't really want, so I will remove. This is a panoply, not needed for automated workflows. 
uh, I keep the NetCDF XR selection because this is where we select the leaf FC to create a plot and this replace and the scatter plot. So then I'm ready. I will create workflows. And I can click on the edit here and check the workflow. So I will check it. We need to do a few things before we can run. So if you can see, some tasks are not connected. So we'll have to look at it a bit more. I can reorganize inputs. So I can see there is inputs. The input is here. And then this is a restart file, if you remember. Um, then I can look at uh, this, which is my uh, CLM fate model. Um, and here the main issue, if I see, I can reorganize a bit. Up. So this is a different expression for the ggplot here, which is a final plot. But there is no connection here. So why? What is happening? So here we are creating a workflow. So it's a generic to any kind of simulation you would do. And the thing, if you remember, uh, I briefly mentioned it, but when we are running the CLM uh, FATES MRAL model, uh, the output, the history file is a collection. Um, and in our case, we have only one file, but sometimes when we are running long simulation, long simulations, the model will generate more than one history files. So one history file. So we will definitely need to uh, extract one of the file, uh, the one we want to plot, or we would need to merge or do something more complex. But here, because we have only one, because we are running five years, what we will do is uh, to add a new task in between to select which history file from the collection we want to use um, for plotting. So, and the tool we will be using is called extract data set. So you can do it for here. Yeah, this one. So you can select it from here or you can go back to your, um, tutorial and go when we are making this look extract and here you can click on this and it will automatically open the tools takes a bit of time to get the tool If it doesn't work and or is a bit too slow, um, I suggest you only take this from here. Yeah. So what we will select here, we'll connect this one to that one. And when we click here, we'll extract the first data set. Yes, this is fine because we have only one. Uh, we need to make sure so here you click on the configure output. We want to make sure it has the right type. So we'll, um, we'll change the type and we'll put it to NetCDF. So this is mostly to make sure the output is NetCDF. And for the rest, uh, I think we can leave it this way. Um, and here, this one, you have to click here. So you have to click here to make it, uh, uh, if you remember just before it was red. So I, I click on, on this connector so that now I can connect these two here. So we have our full workflow. And you can rearrange your workflow as you wish. So it is a bit more easy to understand the different steps. Okay. Up. Uh, and now once this is done, you can save it here. I'm 
So here we have uh, um, created a workflow, but now what uh, we want to do is to, to reuse this workflow. Uh, so you can share this workflow with other. You remember, if you look uh, here, you can have the workflow options. You can download it if you want on your la laptop and uh, it will be a .ga file. Uh, it's just Galaxy workflow. Um, or you can run it. So all your workflow workflows will be um, sorry in the workflow. Sorry in the workflow panel. Yeah, and this is the latest. Will be at the top. It has been created one minute ago. And uh, if you want to run it, so you click on this and you have to customize the different uh, um, steps of your workflow. So what we would like to do is to uh, rerun a simulation, but instead of uh, running the exact same simulation, we will change um, the CO2 values and uh, the atmospheric CO2 so that we can assess um, the change in behavior for the plant, which is this fate model, when uh, the CO2, the atmospheric CO2 is increased in the atmosphere. And this is really typical in, uh, in the climate change. Um, we know that uh, we have more and more CO2 in the atmosphere and uh, the condition for the plants are changing and uh, they are impacting how they grow and how they die, so the fate of the plants. So this is quite an interesting simulation to do. Um, so we have to edit this workflow, make sure you have the right input and output. So make sure you are taking here the input data, which is this one, um, and uh, the restart file, because we want to do exactly the same simulation. But this time, what we want to do is, um, so this is input data. So this is uh, so the CDF, sorry. So we want to update some of the steps, uh, which is, uh, I can't see where is, oh, sorry, this was this one. Um, I need to customize the model. This is uh, still five years, so this is not that one. I think this is in the advanced option where we can customize the CO2 values. Yeah, so here I can edit. And instead of uh, uh, 367 U mol per mol, I will quadruple these values. I will put 1468, which is a lot more. So then we will really see a significant change in uh, the behavior of uh, the plants. So then the model output. And uh, for the rest, I can leave everything as is. Make sure you check everything and the different steps you extract. And then we can run the workflow. And again, it will uh, take some time because uh, as uh, you remember, it takes about uh, uh, three to four hours for running the CLM fate. So all the tasks here will appear. Uh, and once this is done, you will be able to compare and uh, see whether uh, the results are uh, different or not. And what, uh, um, what we see in terms of response, um, when we significantly increase uh, the atmospheric C CO2, um, we can really see some uh, significant changes in after running five years. So uh, if we look at, uh, at the plot we had before, for instance, uh, Let's take uh, go back to the planoply output because they are usually nicer to look at, like this one. Uh, with you know, this is not the right values here. 
yeah, this is this. Yes, this is a total carbon in live plant leaves. So there is no uh, big increase when uh, when we run uh, this uh, five years and uh, with a quadruple CO2, the values will be shifted here on the y-axis uh, because we have a lot more uh, CO2. So if we look at the results here, because it will take far too long to for running, so you can look at it, uh, for instance, tomorrow. Um, but I can show you. So here, this is what we had before. And uh, so it's more or less flat in terms of values. I mean, it's slightly changing, but not that much after several years. But when you are looking at um, uh, the same variable, uh, but in a, in con under condition where we have a quadruple the CO2, you will see that it's uh, it's quite significant how uh, the it will behave for uh, for this uh, variable, which is totally expected. Um, so it means the model uh, works quite well. Um, at the end of the, uh, this tutorial, we show you how to share your, your work, so uh, how to share your history, which I strongly encourage you to do so. Um, so you can know you can make your history uh, share, share, share the, um, with a link, or you can even publish it and uh, give the permission to anyone to access your history. And we can, uh, you can also use this uh, workflow hub which is a new way to exchange uh, your uh, workflow. And this is particularly uh, interesting if you want to uh, exchange your workflow and run it on a different Galaxy instance. So you can, of course, download it, but here it will be publicly available. Um, and if we copy this link here and I show you, we have already put this workflow uh, for um, Uh, for this tutorial, and uh, you click on the Galaxy Climate. And we have three workflows, and uh, um, you can, uh, this is this one, the CLM Fates Alp 1 simulation five years. Um, and what is nice is you can uh, generate this uh, workflow and this image where you can see all the different uh, steps uh, of your uh, workflow. So for, for this, I uh, strongly encourage you to look at uh, documentation. And there is a, uh, some kind of uh, few steps to, to fulfill to get uh, this uh, workflow uh, image, for instance. Uh, so we, it will convert uh, the Galaxy workflow to a common workflow language workflow. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask uh, me on the on the on Slack. So I hope you enjoy this uh, tutorial. Uh, it's of course uh, quite long if you do it in a day, but um, as you can see, there are many uh, stages where uh, you have to wait for quite a while before getting the results. Uh, so for this, I will make sure you can see the results in, uh, in my history. Thank you.